When it comes to tutorials for building the frames of combat robots, it usually begins with somebody talking about their idea, showing a cool CAD model, then going over to a $10,000 plus CNC machine to get it manufactured. And well, I'm not blaming anyone in particular, because I'll be honest with you, if I had access to a $10,000 CNC machine, I would use it as well. But I don't. I'm Jason, the creator of Team Rock Robotics, and this is my tutorial on how I build frames with small weight class robots on my Beetleweight Micro Flash Delta. <music> This whole process I'm about to show you here is basically the result of a little bit of trial and error and trying to figure out a way of how you can actually make cool looking frames for combat robots, at least the small guys, like I said, without access to a giant CNC machine. So what you're going to need here is first of all a 3D printer. Now the 3D printer is for making a template you'll see in a moment here for your piece of the frame. If you don't have a 3D printer you can probably do something similar in terms of making this template I'll show in a minute with maybe um, some sort of wood, like base wood, balsa wood, maybe even thick cardboard. Um, you'll see how that works in just a moment. In addition, you're going to need a jigsaw. This is the main part of the build process. I have a really nice cordless jigsaw right here, but you don't need anything of this caliber whatsoever. A cheap jigsaw will work pretty well. I do like a cordless variant because I have almost cut the corded variant <laughs> in half. What I mean, I should say, I've almost cut the cord up a few times using a jigsaw, an old corded one. So I do recommend a cordless one, but it's not required. Other than that, I need some common hand tools. And this thing sitting in front of me right here, this wood structure, is my custom built jigsaw stand. I find a video to how to build this guy in the show notes. But this is a very helpful little setup for actually using a jigsaw for cutting materials. Let's talk about building the template that's going to be used to cut out the frame pieces of your robot. Now let's talk about the template. I'm here inside Blender. I've got the entire MicroFlash Delta 3D model file and all its, its parts loaded up. Um, what I'm most interested in are these two pieces down here. So let me just jump in and look at those. The right one here, well this is obviously the actual frame piece that goes inside the robot. And the one over here to the left, this is the template. Now how you go from here to here in a 3D modeling perspective is, I fill in the interior regions of the frame, but I attach them to the frame itself. The idea of these interior regions here are so that you have proper support for the jigsaw as you're cutting things out. Now, like I said, there are two little tabs here that hold these interior regions to the actual frame piece. So when you go to cut with the jigsaw, you're going to slice these open. I also have added several circles. These openings are in the interior pieces, as you can see, and those are basically areas where I'm going to drill out and they're going to give me access to those interior regions with the jigsaw blade. So the key feature here is that these holes you cut out, they have to be bigger than the blade of the jigsaw that you're going to be using. And then along the frame itself, there's these little grooves here. These are kind of your guides to where you want to try to maneuver the jigsaw as best as possible. So that's kind of the idea of how you go about creating this frame piece. Now, exactly how you create it depends on what program you're using, Blender versus a CAD versus who knows what else. And, you know, as I briefly mentioned earlier in the video, you, this doesn't have to be done with 3D printing. I just have a nice 3D printer, so it's convenient for me. It shouldn't be too difficult to create a template like this out of an easier to work material such like I said as balsa wood or hard cardboard if you don't have access to a 3D printer. The key thing here though, actually a couple key things to keep in mind is one, you need one complete template for each piece you're going to cut out. This template will get destroyed in the cutting process. And two, the other assumption is, is that there are several holes in the frame itself that you can use to secure the template down to the structure pieces. Like for example, these little holes up here and four of these six holes, I have no idea why these two ended up being here. Um, those are actually used to hold the frame together with the rest of the robot and I'm also going to be using those in a moment here to secure this template down to the aluminum piece. So this guy right here is the completed 3D printed template for cutting out the structure piece for micro flash delta. Correct, that's what I'm about to do with delta. So first things first, I'm going to lay it down in the sheet of aluminum, just figure out where about it's going to be and then kind of cut off that chunk of aluminum so I'm not working with this giant piece right here in front of me. The first step is to apply some spray adhesive to the aluminum as well as the template to glue things down, but this is just a temporary hold. In addition to the spray adhesive, 
You can actually use clamps to hold your template down to the aluminum. This is kind of a bonus feature of using this particular stand. Which as I mentioned at the start of the video, you can find a link to that in the show notes on how to build this jigsaw stand right here. Now it's time to secure the template to the metal. This is going to be a two-step process. Drill out each of the holes. After any given hole is drilled, you want to go back and countersink it. This is very important. Insert a bolt through it just to secure the template in place. Because you need to make sure the screw that's holding the template to the aluminum is below the level of the top of the 3D printed template. If it's not, it's going to get in the way of your jigsaw. And no, I'm not using my most favorite tool of all time, the impact driver. I'm pretty sure that will shred the 3D printed template. Another thing you have to consider here is a little bit of slop. This is not a super mechanical process as if you're using a machine tool of some sort. As a result, I generally have to drill the holes just slightly larger than the screw to allow for a little bit of adjustment when the robot is assembled. Now I do find that once everything's tightened down and the bolts are glued in place, this hasn't been an issue yet. The next step at this point is to cut out all the jigsaw access holes. You can see here I've got a number of holes cut in the template already. These are designed in the 3D model and that's what these points are. They're wide enough in diameter to allow my jigsaw blade to get in there and start cutting through the material in order to cut out the various parts of the template. You can see I've got, ideally I want two in each of the interior sections to get, get cut out and I got four down here to give me plenty of options of where to start. In this case, the diameter of the holes are 3 eighths of an inch, so I'm going to use my drill to drill out each of those holes. So it's ready to cut the frame out, and that's where your jigsaw comes in. Now you don't really need a cordless jigsaw like I have here. Anyone can pretty much do the job, even a, you know, a cheaper one, what it may be. The key thing is that you need to have a metal cutting blade for your jigsaw. And these are relatively easy to find. They're sold to commonly in hardware stores. Just choose a blade that meets the specifications of the metal you're cutting through. Given the fact you have a template that's probably a few millimeters thick riding on top of the aluminum, you're probably going to be limited to about an eighth of an inch thickness of aluminum that you can cut through or eighth of inch steel if you have that type of blade. Start with your various little holes you've cut out in the frame and do your best to follow the guides with your jigsaw. Now you don't have to do things perfectly, feel free to cut through any of the excess plastic, whatever it may be, to get those cuts. But you know, just do your best and, and try to stay as close to the edge of the frame as possible, but you don't have to be perfect. And one more important thing here is that you want to start by cutting out these inside areas of the frame before you try to cut out the entire frame itself. Now that we've got the major areas cut out, I'm going to go back with a jigsaw and do some very careful precision cutting along the edges of the template. This is where you want to take it slow and make sure you try to cut things as nice as possible. Eventually, if you have to and really clean things up, you can use like a hand file, but that's obviously very time consuming to do. So the more work you do with the jigsaw, the better off you're going to be. And while I run the jigsaw here, let me guys give you a free tip. When you're using a jigsaw, Keep an eye on things kind of from the side like this. So obviously jigsaw's here, my face is over here. Of course, the safety goggles are normally on and just have them off for demonstration purposes. There's a tendency, at least I find, that I want to be like this, where I have my head right over the center line of the jigsaw so I can see exactly where the blade's going directly forward. But the problem with that is if a jigsaw gets caught on something, it tends to do this, where it jerks up. So if your head's right here and it gets caught, <laughs> You're taking a shot right to the jaw and that's not going to be good. So that's why it's very important, like I said, just keep an eye on the jigsaw from off to the side like this so that when it does jump up, it's not going to hit you in the face. I finished cleaning up the inside pretty well. You know, it's not perfect, but when using a jigsaw like this, if your robot really depends on like millimeter level accuracy for the parts, this probably isn't the best method. Um, with Micro Flash Delta, there's a little bit of slop, it's not that big of a deal. I just try to get as close as possible because I do have all the mass figured out in grams. And I want to have the final frame piece be within one or two grams of what it actually should be. But like I said, that doesn't require super precision, just being really close enough. Now the inside pieces are cut out and pretty well cleaned up. Let's go ahead and separate it from the rest of the piece of aluminum.
Well, that's enough jigsawing for one day, if that's a word you can actually use in this case. Um, I still have the 3D printed template attached because I do got to take this thing over to my drill press, you know, once it's assembled and out of the box. And drill the last few critical holes, like the weapon mount and the motor mount down here. But that's pretty much this process of how you can create your own aluminum structure pieces for beetle weight, ant weight, maybe a little bit bigger combat robots with using only a jigsaw and a 3D printer. Um, obviously aluminum too, but you know, that's, that's given the name aluminum mount, but you never know. It's just, <laughs> anyway, thank you guys all for watching. Once again, I'm Jason, the creator of Team Rocker Robotics. Go ahead, and subscribe here to get some more random robotic videos or who knows what I may be working on. Is that in the frame? Yeah, you may be able to see some nice high quality hardwood back there in the corner of the frame. Like other things I do on this channel as well than just robots. So anyway, thanks for watching and have a great week.